welcome to HSM Specials. Today we're going to be talking with Kenichi Omae, or Mr. Strategy, who has an incredible reputation as an advisor to governments and corporations, who has written over 180 books with titles uh, ranging uh, from The Triad Power, The Mind of a Strategist, and lately uh, The Next Global Stage and the EU, uh, the impact of the EU power. Thank you very much, Kenishi, for being with us today. Pleasure. Um, you talk that the, the uh, forces dissolving the national borders and, and creating new regional economies, and you say that this uh, new economics for a borderless world, uh, why Keynes and Milton Friedman's economics are history, and what might replace them. What's the answer to those questions? Well, if you uh, look at uh, the economy of Japan over the last 20 years, Japanese government tried everything about macroeconomist theories. You know, they, they, they lowered the interest rate, they supplied money, uh, actually flooded the money into the market to no avail. Uh, we worked on 300, excuse me, three trillion dollars of public works to no avail. Economy is flat. And no impact. And during this time when the government was saying that um, we have a problem, people were saving money. They actually have saved up um, uh, $5 trillion. So had the money come out to the market, that would have been the economy. That would have been, uh, in effect, increased the GDP of Japan. So I think it is the psychology. Psychology of people in the developed country, psychology of the people have more uh, impact on the GDP than the macroeconomic measures. In fact, in the borders economy, if you increase the interest rate to suppress the economy, money comes from the rest of the world to your economy because they like higher interest rate. In the old theory, Higher interest is to suppress the economy, to avoid inflation. But if you have a unique inflationary trend, then the money from other countries, what I call the homeless money, will come into your economy. Um, <clears throat> if, uh, if you want to produce uh, more products, you don't stockpile, even if the interest rate were uh, uh, very low, um, you wouldn't make products. It is just in time. In other words, technology has enabled you to produce on demand, as opposed to anticipate the demand and produce in advance. And therefore, even if you lower the interest rate, it is to no effect. So all the assumptions under which those theories were built have changed? Completely changed. Macroeconomist theories are completely at odds with the reality of the world. And this is because we have the cyber economy. Uh, people don't realize that uh, uh, Microsoft can sell products on the internet, the, even the new software on the internet. And therefore, it doesn't go across the national borders. So the, the customs officers at the border are no use because they can't count how many bytes have gone through the, the internet, right? But then with the credit card, you make the payment. Mm -hmm. and therefore, it's no longer the days of David Ricardo when you are sort of exchanging products. It is exchanged through the national borders uh, and the cyberspace. Okay? And then people use multiples. People use multiples because uh, in order to sort of um, arbitrage the um, uh, European Central Bank, you could sort of um, uh, sell uh, euro by multiples of 30, 40. The central banks will have to defend this, but they don't have the knowledge of the multiple, nor do they have the capacity to use the multiples to fend off the arbitrages. Um, and of course, um, these technologies of multiples and derivatives, uh, cyberspace, are relatively new. Uh, and these new elements of economy a part of the overall economy. Yeah. And therefore, in addition to the, the, uh, you know, the Keynesian economy and, of course, supply-side economy, I think we have to struggle with 
new elements of the economy, okay. plus the psychology of the consumers, psychology of the people. In the developing country, interest rate, money supply, very critical. But in the developed economy, people have the reserves, people have the money. In fact, people have the cars and televisions and refrigerators already. And therefore, if they think psychology is chilled, then they would use the same car for two more years, three more years. Yeah. Which means that if, if everybody did this, this year, demand for automobile is zero. Everyone, however, has the car. Everyone has the television. Everyone has the refrigerator. And therefore, a developed economy is very sensitive to the overall psychology uh, 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 of the society. And therefore, the politicians will have to deal with the psychology of the mass. You know, Adam Smith said it's the invisible hand of the God will take care of the economy. It's the opposite. It's the, in the invisible hands of the mass will take care of the economy. Mm -hmm. You have to pray to God to use the invisible hand of the mass. Okay. And the mass will work out the overall economy. And these are the new things that I'm talking about. I once uh, discussing with Alan Greenspan, I mm -hmm. asked him why economists build so sophisticated mathematical models to predict the economy but forget about the human beings. Yeah. And he said, we probably need more anthropologists than economists at the Federal Reserve. Do you agree with that? Do you think we should have more psychologists and anthropologists at these institutions? Or it's, how think, are we going to deal with that implication? I think what we need is common sense. <laughs> you know, if you're a businessman, and if you have a feel for the people, if you know the psychology of the customers, that's all it takes. You don't need a sophisticated model. You don't need the anthropologist or any of these people. You don't need the scholars, in fact. You need uh, normal wives and husbands and normal people, normal merchants. Uh, you know, fruit shop, meat shop, papas and mamas. They know the psychology of the people. And wallet talks out loud, not the economist. And that's why... Greenspan may, may be saying that it's the psychology you have to understand, stupid. <laughs> and maybe a little bit too late. Too late. Because the whole financial system was built forgetting about the psychology. Of he people. himself was wrong in yes. saying that this economic crisis is once in a century. Well, he already chilled people's mind. So he is now creating the depression. Because if you say this is the kind of crisis once in a century, oh my goodness, let me defend myself, you see. And how can you be true and honest and at the same time have a positive influence? Because if it is a very severe crisis and you say so, you will be a self-fulfilling prophecy. How, how, what's the, the boundary of ethical leadership and just... Uh, uh, driving the markets where you want them to go? Very good question. You should ask the same question to the best salesman. You see, best salesman is always on the edge of a liar. Okay. You see, <laughs> best politician and best economists are on the edge of the, uh, the liar. Angela Mer Merkel of Germany has yes. done very well. She paid 2,500 euros to a junk car if they brought in for trading. Mm -hmm. Trade-ins, right? Yes. Now, that's psychology. And if she says, I will give this incentive until December this year, yeah. well, you want, to, you want to make a choice, right? Mm -hmm. And therefore, German automobile sales didn't dip like it did in, in the US and in, in Japan. Uh, so she knew how to deal with the psychology. It's the incentive, and therefore people feel I get some benefit if buy, I buy this year, right? Mm -hmm. And other governments followed suit, but too late. And therefore, the automobile industry collapsed. Uh, and therefore, Germany didn't see as much dip yes. of automobile sales uh, demand.